I'm an archaeologist with the Thames Discovery Programme, so for those of you that haven't heard of us, we're a community archaeology project that works on the tidal Thames in London, and we um, work with communities across London to record and monitor the archaeology that's under threat from erosion on the foreshore. Um, we've been going for 10 years, um, and I know that that kind of long-term sustainability means that we can start thinking about things in a different way to other projects um, that may be a bit more short-term and have short-term goals. But something we've really started to talk about as a project is, is what are, why are we doing this? That's one reason why we called it, but why? Um, and um, I'd started to hear about this thing called theory of change, and I wondered whether this might be something that we could use at Thames Discovery uh, to start thinking about what what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, so theory of change. Um, it's this thing that we often get on projects, which is like, we kind of know what we're doing, and we have this idea of what we'd like to achieve, but there's a fuzzy bit in the middle, this kind of then a miracle occurs. We don't quite know how we get from one thing to the other. Um, so it's kind of hoping that the theory of change might put that detail bit in the middle. <laughs> okay. So, um, as Sophie's kind of explained already, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but what is a theory of change? It's not that kind of theory. Um, and it's looking at your impact, um, starting with the long-term changes and working backwards from that. And it also helps you to identify the assumptions that you might be making in your project and, and helps you test those. Um, and as Sophie's already showed you a few examples, this is quite a simple flow diagram, which I'm hoping is kind of what we will achieve at Thames Discovery. And the approach that we've been doing at Thames Discovery has been we've been trying to make sure this is a participatory project. We work with, we've trained over 700 people over the years um, on how to monitor the recording, um, uh, monitor archaeology on the Thames. We call our volunteers frogs, which is for sure recording and observation group. So if I talk about frogs, I'm talking about volunteers, not the animal. Um, but also working with partners and supporters and funders as well to try and make sure that this is a collaborative and participatory approach and it's not just what a small number of stars sitting in a dark room think. So, um, yeah, so why does it help? Um, it helps explain what you do and why it hopefully has some agreed goals. I sometimes say that Thames Discovery, because we've had been going for 10 years, we've got hundreds of volunteers um, and lots of different bits to the project are sometimes, it's a bit like um, if you had that parable of the blind men and the elephant where they're all touching a little bit of the elephant and they all think they've got something different because no one can appreciate the big thing. Our volunteers are going off and doing independent research. Some of them are studying and doing dissertations on various aspects of the Thames. They've got sites that they've kind of adopted and are monitoring regularly. We're running a staff um, fieldwork program which we work with volunteers with but then we also do outreach with schools and older people and stuff so that you know there's a huge scope to our project so hopefully it kind of helps us all focus a bit more on what we're trying to achieve and what the big picture is and um, helps us identify what we what we want to evaluate and why we're evaluating it and our assumptions and how we test those it's also something that's iterative so you can go back to it and adapt it and change it I mean a lot of the literature around fear of change talks about this that this is not a static thing this is something that you review and change and if your um, assumptions aren't turning out to be correct then you adapt those and change those and then redevelop your theory of change it helps us communicate your impact and this is really important I've started to see funders ask for this as part of funding applications so if we've already done it then it makes that bit of the process a lot easier because you just have to send them a copy of it rather than having to do it from scratch okay so how do we do it at Thames Discovery we started off last year with a bit of a team brainstorming session where we were just started to talk about impact and what we wanted to achieve and what we thought we achieved as a project. And we've got four members of staff on the project, um, so that's where we started. And then earlier this year, we organised some stakeholder meetings um, <coughs> when we invited... It was an invited guest. We didn't open it up to all of our volunteers. We were keen that we had it. It was a constructive session. Our volunteers have a huge range of views. And so we tried to make sure that that was reflected. But we also invited staff from other aspects of MOLA, people who work on commercial, the commercial side of the business, our comms team, um, our fundraising team, other colleagues in the community engagement team, a lot of our volunteers, um, people who do different things with the project, people who've helped with outreach, people who regularly take part in field work, uh, people who live in different parts of the city, um, to try and get a bit of a cross-section of their views. 
we invited our partners, and um, I think Jane is in the room somewhere because I've seen her tweet that she was there, um, from Historic England, um, some of our funders, other local societies and um, other community archaeology projects in the area. And we also invited mudlarks, who are the people who go down onto the tents and search arti for artefacts. Um, a few of our volunteers are also mudlarks and also some people who are mudlarks just in and of themselves. And we're currently in the process of writing it up. When I submitted this session, I kind of hoped we might have it ready, but that hasn't happened because we've just started field work and that's much more exciting. Um, so, so yes, imminently, I hope we will have something that we can then share with our volunteers and get more feedback on, and, and our partners and funders and get feedback on that. And then hopefully that will some hopefully form our kind of, I'll say final, but it obviously isn't going to be final, but our kind of theory of change. Okay, so one of the activities that we did, which was really lovely, is we um, asked people how they thought the project might be remembered. And the way we did this was we were said, um, imagine in 100 years' time they're going to erect a plaque um, to commemorate Thames Discovery Projects and the work that we did. What will that plaque say? And here's just a couple of examples that, that people in the room did. And there were some really lovely things that people wrote on those, and it really helped us understand what their idea of the long-term impact of our project is so um for instance there's one here that says we it says we trained seven thousand people which we might do in a hundred years time but we've trained seven hundred three thousand sites recorded <laughs> um, since 2008 foreshore recording and observation group members recorded appearing and disappearing archaeology and monitored the effects of climate change and i love this next one we won we won we won this record of restoration of public freedom and to express interest and involvement in local heritage um, some of them were in pencil, so they're really hard to photograph. Uh, the Thames Discovery Programme. To you in 20... No, hold on. 2119, 2019, we thought of you. The Thames has run through all our lives. It has brought us riches of experience and endeavour. Um, and then bringing the Thames back to the people. So really, like, strongly expressed views and emotions around the work that we do about saving heritage. There were definite themes around climate change, about saving heritage, um, giving it back to the people as well it really like it really made you think oh actually we are doing achieving what we said we'd do and there was also a lot of discussion about where this would go with sea level rises and you know where would we put a plaque if there's <laughs> london may not be here in a hundred years time um, so i thought this might be quite a fun exercise for us to have a go at doing today um, so what I'd like you to do, on, either on the worksheet or on a blank piece of paper, is to think about a project you're involved with, or maybe your dream project, um, if you're not working on one at the moment, and, and think about, in a hundred years' time, what would your plaque say? So if you want to just spend five minutes having a think about that, and you can draw it, you can write it. Um, it's sometimes, we found it helps if you do draw some kind of frame to get your head around the plaque. A blank piece of paper can be a bit hard. I've put up a few links for resources and stuff like that, but um, we maybe if people want like a document or something, I'm quite happy to send the slides around and stuff. Um, yeah, thank you.